Hey guys, I have a very fun video for you today. We're gonna learn how to burn some stuff. We're gonna do a controlled burn on our farm as part of our spring cleaning. Right behind me, I have a bunch of debris, branches, shrubbery, leaves that need to get out of here. So I'm gonna light this on fire and I'm gonna show you how to do this safely and quickly. Let's get to it. Now, before we begin, I'd be very grateful if you guys liked this video or subscribe to the channel if you found this video helpful at all. If you didn't, tell me how I can become better. This is a new channel about farming and life-based skills, teaching you everything you need to know to learn how to live off-grid or farm off-grid. So as much as I learn and grow, you learn and grow. Let's get to the video. So first off, we'll need our gear. These things you can find most likely laying around your house, it's very simple. We'll need our burn pit with all of our branches, shrubbery, or kindling. This needs to be well positioned at least 10 feet from any buildings or structures preferably. More distance, the better. We'll need our lighter. We'll need a gasoline can, which will fill up with diesel. Cardboard, it should be a pretty decent sized piece, at least a foot long. We'll use this to start our fire. A hose with water source. Shovel to physically put out fires and move objects. And then optionally, we'll need gloves, durable shoes, and long durable pants. We'll need this when we're moving our material and we get close to the fire. We'll need lighter fluid and we're ready to get started. First off, you'll wanna do this when there's still light out, as it will take a while for the embers to simmer down and burn everything completely. After we gather our gear, let's put it in an easily accessible place where we can reach it quickly while away from the burn area. We want this to be able to be grabbed very quickly. Now, take your diesel and apply it on one area of the burn pile, preferably the furthest away from any structures. It may be tempting to try to just empty the can everywhere, but when dealing with fire, it's always best to be safe than sorry. We can stoke and grow the flames afterwards by physically moving the material in the burning center. Next, take your cardboard and saturate it with diesel as well. Again, you'll want a piece at least a foot long to ensure no diesel gets on you when lighting this. And don't forget to wear your gloves. Secure your diesel can away from the burn area. Next, carefully take your cardboard and light the end of it, and place it in the center of where you saturated your pile. You do not have to get close and physically mess around with it. Use your shovel. You may be tempted to take the diesel can and just pour more to increase the flames, but I recommend not doing this, as fire moves very quickly and can follow your flow all the way to the can. This is very, very dangerous, guys. You do not want to do this. You can use your lighter fluid instead. They're usually made to squirt up to five feet. You do not want to have an action movie scenario where that can bursts and it blows up in the middle of your face. So until they develop a way where you can actually feel the heat through your screen, uh, you'll just have to vouch for me. This is very, very hot. And the main thing that you want to do while this is going off is just monitor it and make sure that whatever is catching on fire, like that right there, you toss in. So you're just scouting the perimeter, making sure that nothing is like catching fire and creeping anywhere. And one thing you do also wanna note is to do this during days where the wind gusts are not too crazy. So off rip, when I started this fire, there was a bunch of branches and branches, dry, dry branches are very, very good kindling. So don't be alarmed if it catches on fire very, very quickly that will usually go away within the span of a couple minutes. During those minutes, you need to make sure that the flames and the ash do not go on anything else that is dry nearby, and then that catches on fire. Because if that happens, now you'll be managing multiple fires, and then that could just get out of control. A fire by itself is not a bad thing, but it's just the element of control that you want to be able to compensate for, that you have it contained. So I'm going to make sure that <laughs> This stays put and yeah, let's knock it out. We're using diesel because it is more sticky than regular gasoline, meaning it'll burn longer and allow our branches, leaves and other shrubbery to build up enough heat to join the fire. Once you get your flame stable, next is feeding your fire just like you would at a campfire. With your gloves, durable shoes and long pants preferably, use your shovel or physically by hand, add more kindling to your flames. So that's the branches, that is the stuff that is gonna burn pretty quickly. We wanna keep that fire alive, this is the fuel for it. 
Use the shovel to put out any stray fires that get out of range of your safe zone and the water hose if necessary. We want to create a furnace of sorts, turning our volume materials into the fire. Once your flames have run their course and your material is simmering down, keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't pick up any steam or otherwise put it out with water if you want to end the flames quickly. I cannot recommend leaving a controlled burn that isn't completely out. Wasn't that tough. Um, I will say this, I did not have to use any lighter fluid for this burn. We did have enough dry material to keep the fire going. Namely, when I use lighter fluid, it's really just to direct the flames to where I want it to go. Uh, if the flames are too high and I'm physically unable to get to a place where I can kind of stoke the fires, I use lighter fluid to direct it. Say, for instance, like um, I put diesel in one area and the flames aren't just, they're just not hitting that space. I'll use lighter fluid to kind of just guide the flames to that area. But this went away pretty quickly. Um, within about 10, 15 minutes, most of the material is pretty much decimated. It was just a lot of volume, a lot of branches, a lot of twigs, a lot of uh, leaves from the palms. Um, and really the fires that I've done before on this property were pretty much roots. So like a lot of the trees that the past landowners didn't use or they just died away, they left a lot of root stems and that's the very opposite of this fire. That previous fire was pretty much a uh, tough hard wood. So that will take a lot longer to burn. And in that specific instance is a case where you would use lighter fluid. So we're pretty much done here. I'm gonna just make sure that the flames are put out. Um, I'm not gonna get too much into the weeds of trying to burn every piece of uh, material here because I'm sure that we'll have plenty of other fires to do in the future. But I hope you guys did learn something today. Um, fire is very dangerous. So I would say don't try this at home, but do this in a space where you have access to water. Do this in a space where you feel confident in your ability to ask for help. Um, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, it's kind of a pro in that you're pretty much not going to burn any buildings down, but you could start a forest fire and really that is up to you to prevent, as Smokey the Bear would say. So I am going to leave this in your capable hands. This is what I've learned in starting my controlled burns and they've been very, very useful when taking regular material that's found on the farm and then turning it back into something a little bit more compact that I can still use on the farm. So, so the result of this controlled burn doesn't leave us with trash. So as opposed to what you may think at the end of a barbecue when you have ash from your grill, you know, you think, oh, let me just toss that. Or for those of you that know better, you could put that on your plants. One person's trash is your plant's treasure. One thing that we can use this ash for, which is rich in lime and also potassium, is a sort of fertilizer for your plants. Now, I'm gonna specifically show you guys how to apply that to your plants properly. That way you don't chemically burn them but stay tuned for that video coming very soon. I'll link it in this one as well. It'll be sort of a series. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. There's gonna to be plenty more to come. Again, if you like this video at all, please let me know in the comments, like, subscribe. And if you didn't like the video, please roast me in the comments because I'm pretty sure this fire did that too. This is Growing With Dev, and if you're here, you're growing too. Welcome to the family, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.